What is up, guys? Today we have a special episode. It's me, Toys DIY Audio, with Justin, the DIY Audio guy, and a new face, Jeff Schneider from BNC Group, which Chiare is part of. Yeah. Is, that, is that the right pronunciation? It sure is. <laughs> oh. I feel Italian already. That's right. Fragile. <laughs> Fragile. Fragile. Must be French. <laughs> I do so my shopping a, at a French store called Target. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> not Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I think that one doesn't work. <laughs> Target. All right. So, Justin, first of all, Justin, Jeff, how are you guys doing today on your holiday? Did you guys get a day off? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. BNC yep, is yep. very, very gracious with their holidays. <laughs> oh, nice. So, before we my, get start. Uh, Oh, God, just I use my day off to work on on my truck. I'm trying to um, get away from putting subwoofers on the back seat of the pickup truck. So the back seat is out and I spent the day yanking the seat belts out. So it's kind of a point of no return there. So nice. Yeah. And now you're going to put some Chiare in it. Uh, I'll learn tonight about Chiare and find out if yes, I want to. Is. So <laughs> back back in back of me you can see one of the four uh 15 ds 1154s back there some very oh, yeah. strong 15 inch drivers the the mm. bl is like 33 on those i think so wow yeah it, it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm doing a build my element and i actually was ripping out i used a lot of ugga duggas on seat belts and other bolts and, and that yesterday <laughs> So we we're talking about building his Honda Element, but before Jeff built a Honda Element earlier this year, he built something even cooler. Do you want to share what that is, Jeff? Do oh, you remember the, what it is? The beautiful oh, RAV4? No, not the RAV4. It's one that every oh, four-year-old would wheel. die for. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Power Wheels was really something. So that had uh, eight, eight CX in 32, I think. It had eight eight inch coaxials in it, and then it had uh, two 12 inch subwoofers, and it was uh, it was something. I think we we all, in testing at the house we got almost a 160 out of it. Wow! And that's yeah. that's a power reels. That's when you don't care if your kid can hear for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, so Jeff, this is the first time you and I have met, and I don't know if anyone in our audience knows who you are, uh, but if you would, tell us a little bit about who you are and your background. We mentioned who you work for. Uh, I see some big trophies in the background, and you're you're building some some car audio and stuff. So who are you, and what do you do, and, and tell us the backstory. And why should we listen to you? Right. <laughs> so I, uh, I started my uh, career really. Uh, I moved over here from uh, to Dayton, Ohio, from uh, Vancouver, Washington, and I started to be a mecha judge when I was there. So, mobile electronics competition uh, association. So, you're a car audio guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but definitely at heart. So, uh, I started judging, and I'm I ended up going to. Uh, Parts Express's Midwest Audio Fest one year, and the show was awful, like the car audio portion of it. It was awful. It didn't make any sense. So then later on, I contacted them and said, hey, why don't you let me judge your show? So they sent uh, a good friend of mine now, Mike Vandenbroek, uh, who actually works for Workwin. And uh, hmm. so he, at the time, worked for Parts Express. So he came out, looked at one of my shows, he was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You'll come out and judge next year. So I went and did it, went over great. And then uh, he contacted me and he's like, do you want to come work at Parts Express? I'm like, of course I do. So <laughs> I went and interviewed and I got to the very last step in the interview process. Um, it was between me and somebody else and somebody else just edged me out. And then uh, that person turned out to be uh, Chris Perez. <laughs> And just so you know, we actually tried to get the somebody else on the show first, but he said no. So I, I don't. Yeah, no, I completely understand. <laughs> no, we, we didn't. He, oh, we've he, had he Chris on, Perez on the show. We yeah, had he him was on. The show. on. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, back he, in the early days of the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, him and I him and I were just talking earlier today, too. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. So uh, everyone loves Chris. Oh yeah, who doesn't? So we. Uh, so after that happened, he's like, "Well, I've got this. Other, I've had this other company that you know, or they're competitors with Parts Express, but I know some people that work there, so I can get you in there." I'm like, "All right." So I interview and I get the job at MCM Electronics. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I worked Perfect. there and I was like tech support and quickly moved up from there to like a product analyst and was like helping write product and bring uh, descriptions on product and bring product in. And then uh, they were merged together with Newark. And at that point they're like, hey, uh, you don't have a job anymore. Oh, so I'm like, all right. That's, and as that's as the way mergers go up, typically, right? You, yeah. you, you've you got to fire half the people yeah. or else it doesn't make sense to merge. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing was I was able to leave on company time and go do interviews. So that was cool. Oh. Uh, so Parts Express actually headhunted me after that. So uh, when they, because apparently I made enough of a name for myself at that point, they're like, well, let's give this Trump a chance. So uh, <laughs> they got a hold of me and I was actually at Make the Dayton Maker Fair. And they came up while I was at the MCM booth and they're like, uh, do you want to come do an interview? And I look at the guys at uh, MCM, I'm like, I'm going to be gone for a little bit. <laughs> so I, <leave laughs> and I, I talk to them and get like my first entry uh, into Parts Express taken care of. And then I had one more formal interview and it was all set in stone after that. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll tell you, this is where me and Jeff met was uh, when Jeff was working for Parts Express. They called me down. They asked uh, me and Kirby Meets Audio to come down for Midwest Audio Fest. We, we went down. It's kids. We all have kids. My kid might come in the door next. And um, I, I met Jeff there the first year. They got rid of all their car audio stuff. Me and Kirby were so excited to listen to all the car audio stuff. It was all gone. We were all like, dang. And then uh, Jeff worked the line for a while. Now, you, you worked a lot of lines while you were there. But I know you headed the line of a wave core. And mm -hmm. you got me some of the wave core drivers that people saw on the channel. And to this day, I still absolutely love those wave core drivers. One of my patrons ended up getting them after a while, but those were just, I, I, I love those. So I am curious because now you've seen a lot of drivers. You've seen a bunch from Parts Express. You've seen Dayton. You've seen all these. What separates Chiare and Ch <laughs> Chiare and mm -hmm. BNC from some of these other ones? So it's a it's a com it's completely different from what I I guess used to do. So a lot of my stuff was like the sound quality oriented stuff, like I mm. like super high end, lots of fiberglassing and getting stuff done in there uh, to make it sound as accurate as possible. Uh, so it's a little bit different with the chair and BNC. You a good person. All right. Well, give me one. I will be right back. No worries. No worries. No worries. We'll pop him out of the out of the show for just a second. And we'll pick right so, up because so kids are just Brian, part of it, right? Absolutely. And Brian Rolston said he got the uh, wave core, and he absolutely did. And every day I regret selling them to him for like <laughs> pennies on the dollar. I can't even get those drivers anymore. You're just fantastic. So, <clears throat> Jeff. If you notice, he had a little stain on his shirt. That's spit up, actual spit up. And you can see <laughs> why he's got a little meat with him. Yes. Ah, awesome. Everyone say <laughs> hi to the to the mini Chiari. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little, the, the stuff is, so it's obviously, it's pro audio drivers. So things are, it's a little bit different. Like I've, I've obviously dealt with it working at Parts Express because I managed to speak the component. Uh, and that's actually how I got my job at BNC was I met my boss Bennett through there and uh, found out that they were looking for somebody that knows car audio. And I'm just like, hey, uh, I know a little <laughs> bit about car audio. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so the drivers are much more efficient in, in general, and especially BNC right. being the you know, world's largest uh, pro audio driver manufacturer. They, they know what they're doing. And they do it very, very well. Everything is down is done exactly the way they want it or doesn't get put out, period. So the quality control is like super top notch. But all of this stuff is made in Italy at the factories that they own. So it's it's nice like having that kind of control over stuff where 
Where so you're saying both B and C and Chiare are made in Italy? Yeah, just like manufactured. So is 18 Sound. All three of those companies are owned by really? BNC Group. And they're all manufactured in Italy. So they're not yes. like designed because for example, I, I, I was dealing with SB audience who say they're designed in Denmark, but they're actually made in China. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they say that, but yours are actually made in an Italian factory. Yeah. Yeah. Everything That's... is made. Everything is made in Italy. And many parts for uh, a lot of our stuff is actually sourced from Italian sources. So not you everything, know, but. You know, BNC makes one of my favorite compression drivers that I've used so far. What, which for, one is that? For a value. What? Which one is that? The DE250? See, you already knew it. You oh, yeah. already knew that's it. A, no, that's that's a great one. I, I love the DE250. And well, it's like a hundred it's like a hundred hundred and fifteen bucks or something for one. And that thing is hits way above that price point. Oh, it absolutely does. I, I just love it. So a lot of BNC coaxials are just like that's so BNC really got came came to be with like the woofers and then uh, you know people were like, Oh, these are really cool, but then I don't know what clicked with people, but they noticed that the, the compression drivers were fantastic. And mm. that's the, what really made it for them was some of these compression drivers. And that's where they make the, all these strides and technology. Because uh, essentially any woofer engineer, anybody, any speaker engineer can make a woofer, right? They can model everything and get everything made for a woofer. But it's like, very, very few, very limited people can actually make and design a compression driver. There's a lot more that goes into that. So, and then one of my, so this is my personal favorite compression driver, and this is oh. the uh, the DE550. Oh, I love okay. This one. So this has the uh, the peak diaphragm. Hmm. I'm sorry. And the what diaphragm? Peak. Peak. So it's like a polymer. Okay. And okay. It, it's wonderful. I absolutely love it. So I have a pair of these in my uh, in my RAV4 on, in under uh, dash compression driver horns. And, and oh, you got the horns going under the dash. Oh, of okay. <laughs> and I'm doing the same. I'm doing the same thing in my element with the same drivers because I just love them so much. So so that one's about twice the price of the DE250. Do you believe mm -hmm. it's twice the driver? Um. I mean, effectively, for most people, no. I, it's, I think there's a lot to be said for the clarity of it. Yeah. But if you're just looking for something that sounds good and gets loud, then the DE250 will do it for almost anybody. I mean, so, this is just like the next step up. So it's kind of funny because I, I, I work with the, I, I work with and talk to a lot of companies in the background. I, I don't always show everyone's products that I talk to in the background. It's just just not what I do. But I was talking to a company, I will not say their name, and they were trying to work on a compression driver and their standard was the DE250. They were trying <laughs> to and they would play theirs back and they'd say, "No, we're not there yet. Hold on." <laughs> and they would go back and rework it. And that's a true story. I, I can't tell you the company's name because it was told to me in confidence, but I I just I find that I find it to be so true because I I told them, I said, you know, my favorite compression driver is a DE250. And they're like, you know, actually. So, yeah. talk, uh, so, uh, so I've got, I got a question for you. Yeah. Hey, wait, a lot real, of real questions quick, can you, for you, actually. Can you ask that question real quick? Okay. Sean Definitely. gave us, a, first of all, thank you, Sean, for yes. the super yeah. chat. Yes, Sean. He, he super chat us. Chat. And by the way, oh. if anyone has a question they have to get out, super chat is probably going to be the only way on this show to get it out. Yeah. Go ahead. is a good driver. Um, so let's see if you're looking to use that as like a mid base, let me go look at it again. There's, there's so much, so many drivers that it's hard to, uh, keep up with all the specs, but if I remember right, it's an inexpensive Mio. Oh yeah. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a great driver. It's sensitive. It'd be great if you could match it with like. I would like a small coax. Something like honestly, if I'm going to build like a home theater, one of my the things that I really want to do is one of my I have a couple of drivers here that I really like, but this is probably my favorite driver that BNC makes. So this what is, is it? The four CXN thirty six, and it's a four inch coax. 
pairing something like this to the 10CL would be wonderful. It hmm. is just all in one solution. So it has two binding posts on there, one for mid and one for it's it a has, it has two terminals. So it's got terminals. Terminal. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, so, then it's got, so it's got one for the woofer here and one for the compression driver on the back there. So you don't need a Excellent. horn with that. You just, just that and your 10-inch yep. yeah, woofer. So right the, here. The, the nice thing about this is, or I guess it depends on what your goal is, uh, these things are like lasers. So they don't, because they don't have any dispersion pattern effectively without a horn lens. So gotcha. uh, they're very directional, but at the, for many applications, that's great because you're trying to eliminate a lot of reflections. And if you can eliminate a good first reflection, then a lot of people are very happy. <laughs> yeah, and, and we've talked about this before with home theater in general. And it, it, there's there's two different thoughts on this. One thought is, hey, I want as much coverage as possible for all the seats, even though they're going to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. I just want room filling sound. And then the other thought process is, no, I want my speakers, at least my front three, to be very directional so that way I can tell what's going on in the left side, what's going on in the right side, and what's going on in the center. I want to be able to tell or differentiate where the sound is actually coming from. And really, that's going to be more of a personal decision on what you want to do with your home theater. But that sounds like a fantastic idea. Now, uh, Justin, you had a question, and I cut you off. So did I've you always, okay. Yeah. I've always got questions. So um, I don't know about the majority of our audience, uh, but I don't have – any experience at all with uh, pro audio drivers, pro audio speakers. Uh, my, my entire world is, you know, what DIY stuff I put together for my home theater and, and boom boxes and stuff and stuff I put in the car. Um, what exactly is a compression driver? What frequency ranges does it, uh, does it play? And how is a compression driver different from a, a dome or a cone or something? Yeah. So uh, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that, but effectively what, the, the, the frequency range for compression driver really is to turn, I mean, there's so much that goes into this. So effectively a compression driver itself is just a, a dome in here inside that is uh, inside this driver. And you can produce uh, a, a wider, I'd say overall a, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Take your time. It's all good. I, I, you know, the, I, if I, if I may step in too, yeah. I mean, all, all we're talking about with a compression driver is a compression driver can either be a mid range or a tweeter yeah. typically. And then you, you, the designer gets to determine the frequency range based on however they decide to manufacture it. And those are all going to have their drawbacks, good or bad. And it's kind of yeah. like, it's kind of like even, a, even a, a normal tweeter, right? Like anytime we look at, Sometimes you'll see some with double magnets or something to handle more power, or sometimes you'll see them do a short copper shortening rings to be able to try to lower distortion. But all of those come at sacrifices in other areas. But the one thing that I like about compression drivers more than anything else is typically they're very high sensitivity. And because of that, it allows people like me that want to use them for home theater. I've made a lot of home theater builds with those compression drivers. It allows them to have a very clean sound because we don't have to push them to the limits of the speaker. So usually our distortion level is pretty low for what we're so doing. The, a, a good way, so a compression driver is obviously limited by its design, like the diaphragm diameter is gonna help right. determine uh, what, uh, what the frequency range is obviously because of the mass and everything like that. But then there's the, the biggest con like variable is the, the wave gap or the horn. So uh, the per two purposes so you, of a horn. You have to use a waveguide or a horn with a compression driver. You, yeah, you, you I mean, uh, to, really you do. to get any kind, anything usable, absolutely. Uh, because so the first reason that people use, that you use waveguides or horns is the impedance control. So you need to make sure that the impedance uh, of the, the air, when, so think of it like this, when you're leaving, the impedance needs to match from the energy <laughs> needs to match the outside uh, air, right? As it does, like as it's leaving the horn. So gotcha. with that, you know, you need to make sure that you're getting uh, all the energy out like that. And then the second, and also arguably most important, both of them are very important, but um, is the dispersion. So the dispersion pattern of a horn really determines like wh how, what the 
angle is going to be. So you can get a wide dispersion horn where you're, and there's, so, there's just so many different types, but you can and, get. And that's why that four inch driver you just showed us, you said uh, well, beaming is the term we use was like a laser. It's because yeah. in essence, it's using the, the, um, I guess the voice coil of the four inch driver as the horn. And so mm -hmm. you've got a really on axis, not much off axis. Sorry about that. Let's hit the mic. Yeah. So you got a really strong on axis and once you get off axis, nothing, which I guess might be good if you could aim those in a car right at the uh, Mika judge's face, right? Yeah. No. Right at the judge. That might be fun. Uh, uh, build some dash pods and aim those right at the uh, driver's seat for a, for a one seat build. Um, oh, absolutely. And, um, I can see the advantage with the cutting out the reflections. And so really what it boils down to is, is that horns are going to determine the dispersion and, yeah. and the compression driver is very efficient. Yeah. And the, the other thing that, um, so this isn't, this is just the basic properties of a horn. So uh, if the, the, what the larger the horn effectively the lower frequency response you have. So as, if you can see, uh, oops, went the wrong way there. That horn, yeah, back, horns back there. Yeah, we've never done that. Never. <laughs> I always go this way. Wait, no, next, no, next no. Over uh, here, right? uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that beat, That's so the three hundred hertz one, right? Yeah, this is the ME four six four. So this is the largest horn that BNC makes, and that is nearly two foot by two foot. And, and that yeah, thing is nearly two hundred and sixty dollars or something, right? Yeah, it's, it's bigger so than your child. That, <laughs> it's funny story. That is the only part at for that BNC sells that's not actually made in Italy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that is made in the United States because otherwise you are shipping uh, air. America and it is not very cost effective. No, Home that with the makes giant sense. Horns. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let, let me talk about that for a second, because that's a very interesting and it's actually something I wanted to bring up. Now, I do want to talk about Chiare as well, and we will talk a lot about Chiare later. But first, I want to talk about this BNC because BNC has something that I think is absolutely unbelievably awesome. And that's they're one of the only companies that I know of in the DIY market to sell compression coaxials. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know what a compression coaxial is, Jeff's got one, although I don't know if he can pick it up with holding a baby, but they basically are, is that compression driver? No, the compression coaxial. Oh, oh, the, oh, the yeah. coaxial horn oh, driver. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, that looks heavy. No, that's okay. That's, that's only a 1.4 inch, which is crazy, but that has mm -hmm. two terminals on it, one for a mid range and one for your high frequency. And that's only that thing can go down to like 500 hertz ish, 300 hertz, 300 yeah. hertz, so and all the a, way up to what, like 18 kilohertz or so? Yeah. Or yeah. somewhere in that range. Yeah. So uh, the effective frequency responses. So it, I, I, I don't pay attention to that much myself anymore because with DSP, <laughs> a lot of the stuff, like it's the 3 dB down. So at the top end, you give it a little boost of that 20K mark and you're fine. Don't, don't yeah, sure. Fine. So if anyone needs that extra sparkle, don't worry. It, it's fine. <laughs> But, well, you know, you can, you can, you, there, are, you know, a, a car audio subwoofer can play almost up that high. You could, you could have you, something like that and just, I mean, if you could fit a subwoofer under the dash along with that, uh, along with that thing in a horn, you'd be set. You'd have all the front stage come in from the front. And so really, uh, if you wanted, so that's a, that's an interesting point. So a BNC is going to release um, at ISE in Spain. Uh, the 18 inch triaxle. So that is, uh, it's an interesting, so it uses an 18 inch woofer and this on the back of it. And it's got a very large horn. And uh, the, does it have a horn in the center of the woofer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's a rectangle, it's a rectangular horn. And so what 90 by 90 or 60 by 60 or something? No, it's, uh, you don't know. It's it's not a big yeah, deal. I, I'm just curious. Yeah. So i i've i've only I've only seen prototypes. So i i'm not a hundred percent percent sure where everything landed, but uh, it's it's an interesting driver. So the woofer. It, it was a lot of compromises that had to happen to get everything to play 
nice with each other. So the the woofer plays up to 600, and due to the horn size, the this driver plays down to 500. So okay. it is uh, something. What's it? So I just I just got a phone call. It was from YouTube, and they said that they really want you to send me that to make some home oh. theater speakers with. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's YouTube. Sorry. Just, so, I, I, <laughs> yeah. He said, he said, Justin just started laughing. Listen, one of those that comes in is the, the first one that I get a chance to use. I know the first one isn't mine. The first one is going to my boss and probably oh, sure. and any of the other OEMs that want it. But the first one that I'm able to get will probably, hopefully, be going into like a demo vehicle at some point. Like that's that's what my that's what my goal is. So, so see, <laughs> this this has always been my thing. I I truly believe BNC has the parts to make what I would consider an end game home theater speaker. Period. Period. And what I would use, although there's there's one gripe that I have, and I want I want to hear your opinion on this, Jeff. What I would use is one of those compression coaxials, exactly like what you were talking about. Although I didn't realize that they were having a triaxial coming out. Try to cross it over, buy 500 hertz if you can, and hook it up with a 15, or sorry, an 18 or 21 inch subwoofer up front. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if it's sealed as long as as long as you can get low end extension, mm -hmm. and then you would basically have a full range tower, all the way down from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's extremely sensitive. You don't need to throw a ton of power at it necessarily to just rock your world. Oh, so sure. here's here's my gripe, though. Here's my gripe. Last I checked, because a horn is is designed in a way that it 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 loads to a certain point, and mm -hmm. after a while, it's no good after a certain frequency. The only horn that I've seen on BNC's website, and really the only horn I've really seen on Parts Express website that can go that low is is the one behind you. Is that right or? Yeah, I I believe there are other horns out there that are designed to play close to this. Um, so there's other drivers like uh, Celestian has one that plays extremely low. I remember when I worked at Parts Express, they they came in to show us one, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, the horn. How big is this horn? And they're like, oh yeah, it's like three foot by three foot, and I'm like. <laughs> So we're not getting any then, I imagine. They're like, well, shipping is still a big problem. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, I understand. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there are other horns out there, I imagine. And, honestly, there are people much smarter than I that can make horns designed for this. Like, you just – you have to have – making horns is not quite as hard as designing compression drivers, but it's not – it's not easy to do. You can use a horn calculator. You can use something like horn rasp or uh, whatever. But it all of that is still simulation. There's so much trial and error that goes on. Like simulations, I, I've I've learned also from my time at BNC, the simulations don't really mean a whole lot. That it's the real world testing that you can simulate something wonderful. You put it into real world, it's like what the hell happened here? And it just things change like that. Yeah, I, it's that it's it's very interesting. I was just wondering because some of the cost that goes into these things, uh, you know, B and C isn't cheap, but they're also not they're not bottom barrel stuff either, right? No, a lot of times no. when you you look at, I mean, they're they're high quality things. And so recently they picked up eighteen sound and Chiare, and you have what looks like a bunch of Chiare drivers. Beside you, I don't know anything really about Chiari. Do you know much about Chiari, Justin? I've never heard of them. This is completely new to me, so I'm excited. Yeah, so mostly a car audio brand, but they do they do a lot of pro audio, um, and because that's the nature, that's where they started out. I mean, honestly, Chiari's been around almost as long as BMC. It's like 65 years. Last year, I think, was 65 years, and uh, so they they've had a bunch of drivers that have come and gone and a lot of a lot of employees and a lot of history but this what we're currently working with is really cool because we're able to get some more resources so we're starting to like leverage some 
some of the uh, engineering resources that we have now and some of the uh, design resources. So what we've got is like, this is the GRI SPL line. So this is a CMI 160 ND. And this is a six and a half inch neodymium driver. And it's a midwoofer. So really I'd say somewhere around like 80 to like 4K. And okay. it's, a, it's an awesome driver. Nice and sensitive. It play, it, it obviously being neodymium, it's lightweight in comparison to something that you're going to get for. You see, that's America. interesting. The, the fact that it can play up to 4K. I mean, how, I mean, I mean, you're going to get some beaming. It's a six and a half inch driver. Cool. So you, you, you know, you're not, you, you know, you can't, get beyond physics it's um like two, but i'm two, the, 2k or something like that effectively is beaming for a what's that say again 2k is about beaming for six and a half somewhere around there 24 yeah but like the one thing that i always you know people say it's it's somewhere in that range but it's not like beaming goes like this right you know no. it's not like it's just right right it's it's a very gradual it, you can still cross over much later than that. I mean, it's not uncommon for eight to ten inch woofers being crossed over in the one point seven to two kilohertz range. But you know, if you're um, if you're on axis, it's 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 all good. Beaming only matters when you're off yeah. axis. Um, but the you know to be able to go up to four K, you could cross that over with a tweeter. If it goes down to eighty, I mean, you're you know why waste your money on a three way setup when something like that can go up so high? Oh, absolutely. But so the, the thing that a lot of car audio guys like to do. So I've, I've been guilty of this for a long time until I started like really looking into it. A bit more. They want to cross those woofers and their doors low, low, very low. And there's, there's yeah. absolutely no need to do it. It's just, it, there's no reason. I mean, let, unless you're doing a lot of work to your doors, number one, that's a rattle trap. Uh, number two, I mean, your subwoofer is going to play up to 80 and 100 fine without any issue. And it's, it's not going to localize back there as long as you use time on So doing something so like that and being able to use something that's going to get much louder and be able to make easier with a tweeter sounds like a win-win to me. Right, right. What's the sensitivity on that? Well, the, the this other good thing. 96.5 at uh, 2.83, I think. I was going to say the other good that's, thing about be oh god just that's very sensitive. Uh, that's yeah. um, <laughs> hmm. You know, I've got I've got <laughs> eight inch woofer that I that I use in my car in my Rav Four, and uh, I wish I had one out. I don't, but it is the CME two hundred, and it's an eight inch woofer ferrite, and the the sensitivity is like ninety nine point five. And it's 2.83, but it's a forearm driver. So, yeah, uh, I uh, I love that driver so much, and it doesn't require much EQ at all. And honestly, the EQ that it that it does require is probably because it's in a small kick panel enclosure in <laughs> back of like in a kick panel. I mean, right. <laughs> So thank you, Kibbo, for the super chat. He said, just showing some love for the content. Hope to catch you guys more often. We love having you, Kibo. And just so you know, too, Kibo, it's really weird. He told me he actually got the same phone call I did about the triaxles. So that's good to know. Well, good. Well, man, YouTube is making some phone calls. I know. Well, <laughs> you know what? Sometimes they just like to reach out and show their love, too. <laughs> what was that? Is that you? Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. I thought I thought Justin was like having his inner excited like warrior voice coming out. I was like, Justin, well, you know, settle down. You two won't call me, so you know, there's a reason, I guess. No, uh, so here's the deal. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, if you can cross over later, you know, obviously there's a lot of reflections in a car anyway, where it's going to be harder to to work with in general. I'm sure you guys, are, but I was going to say being able to cross over later gives you more options at tweeters as well, as far as uh, maybe using something like a ribbon or something of that nature, if you wanted to. So the, the problem with a lot of ribbons in cars is the, uh, the, so that filament and the ribbon is not treated a lot of the time. UV treated. Ah. So what you do is you can, it deteriorates over time. I, I've run into several people 
competitors, and honestly, I bought some some old Pioneers ribbons that I got at a, uh, I think it was like a, one of MCM's liquidation things I found them. Um, but, you know, it, it That's still a good really point. I, I actually would have never thought about that. Yeah. UV is the enemy of a lot of stuff in car audio. So you could use all these cool, like one of the uh, big ones was like using the Rip Fountech, um, mm. drive the, the FE, like one of the FE 85, yeah, FE 88, uh, I think, FE 88, something like that. Yeah, th and they had a bunch that were basically the same, like two to three inch full range. Mm -hmm. drive. Is that what it, yeah, the silver ones, or yeah, but the thing is that cone, uh, was UV treated so that even that like aluminum film that they had on there discolored. Kind of like this guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I think I have one. Yeah. The yeah. And, uh, they, they were super popular in car audio, but if you put them in a dash location, you know, all goes out the window as far as like being that same color again. And honestly, I'm not sure what kind of effect that really would have on the uh, performance. It might have none, but at the same time. Yeah. Why risk it? Yeah. Right. Right. So one of the things that caught me about Chiare uh, was a couple things. One, they have a wide range of different looking drivers. Like I, I, I don't know how often I come across a brand that everything looks the same kicker. Um, you know, it's like, okay, everything's the same. You know, well, you, I, I'm not. You know. They use a different color stitching uh, with different uh, versions true. of the drivers, you know, and yeah. the, the chief ones have yellow themed and, the, and then they have the, the comp Arger red. So they, they do look different. Mm -hmm. No, they right. don't. They haven't changed. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really look, you know, and I'm, I'm only poking fun at them, but they, they look a lot different. And the other thing that caught me is a lot of the Chiare have that, it looks like the milled aluminum on the back that looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a lot of the cool thing about a lot of chariot drivers, so um, it may not look like anything special, this basket. So, I mean, the big thing about it is, like, it's it's not a cheap basket, and it we own the tooling on this stuff. We we. There's a video out there of on YouTube about uh, Chiari, like how it's made speakers, and it has like a Chiari factory and how they do it. And at one point, uh, I think they still do it at, on some drivers, but not all. But they actually made their the cones in house. So like they had a, a process wow. where they were able to make the cones. So we own the tooling on a lot of this stuff. It's not stuff that you can just go buy like. In China, like it's not an open tool that we bought from China. This is something that the tools are mostly made in Italy. So, like it, we, the big thing about BNC that I really have a lot of respect for is uh, Lorenzo Capini, the gentleman that owns BNC, said from day one, he's like, I will never take a job from Italy to give somewhere else, never. That's why the stuff is made in Italy. Is we don't we don't send job things to be done unless in China. unless it's a giant horn that we don't want to ship. Does that that one that one makes sense? Though. They're not taking I the job. I, from somebody, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I'm joking. I'm joking. I I'm only joking because it, it really does make sense. There's there's different things that just don't don't make sense to do, and and I get that. It actually is very impressive to me because I've I've come across a lot of companies that try to keep their manufacturing in-house, try to keep their, but you can tell typically the ones that do because the quality is really good from driver to driver. And I'm not saying that companies that build in China and things like that are not necessarily good quality. So don't, mm -hmm. don't give me a saying, but the ones that have their own factories tend to the ones that I've dealt with at least tend to have very good strict standards, which I like. No, and you know, like obviously, I did factory visits when I worked at Parts Express, and I mean, there is honestly some factories where I was like, "Wow, this is interesting." It wasn't necessarily factories where we had things built; it might just be a potential visit. It's like this is interesting. You don't have any doors in this facility. Wow, how do you uh, keep <laughs> dust down? They're like, "Oh, is that is that a problem?" 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, not okay. at all. <laughs> but, and then there's places that you would go and you're like, I've never seen anything like this place. This is amazing. <laughs> and it's like super strict quality control. Things are done exactly as they please it. They have strict instructions on how certain certifications need to be done. And it's like they, they put so much effort into this stuff and it, it's commendable. It really is. Does Chiare have a good small subwoofer that you could put in a camper, something like an eight inch or something of that nature? Yes. So we actually, uh, we couldn't bring over the entire Chari line to uh, North America right away because it is such a expansive line. Um, but we do have one coming in and it's going to be a single forum eight inch subwoofer. And it's, uh, it's really nice. And it's the cone. So this product has been out a while, but it has a cone that's somewhat reminiscent of like the Focal Flax line. It's different because uh, it's, it doesn't look the same in person, but in the pictures that they took um, online and put on there, it is somewhat similar in looks. Let me grab it which which one is that? I'll pull it up. It's the uh, HSG two hundred. Let's see. Oh, if thank I can, God I bet... you don't like name your speakers like Peerless. We'd still oh, be here God, listening no, that, to the number. That's it's impossible. I I remember dealing with that stuff. Oh. And honestly, Tang Van too. Like, yeah. Trying, yeah, I'm not trying, yeah, yeah. I'm not finding it. Um, oh, it's uh, to the. We're working on a new website which should be available very soon. But here, did you I say the in, HSG 200? Yeah, H HSG 200. Yeah, I've got it right here. It? But uh, yeah, let me see if I can present it. And where can I buy this at? Um, who who sells them in the U.S. <laughs> So right now we're currently working on a distributor um, for online. We have several dealers across the country for like uh, motorcycle and car shops, uh, car audio shops. But uh, we're working with an online distributor right now that hopefully we'll be able to sell these. Wow! So this thing does. This thing is capable supposedly of eight hundred. Is that program is that power? RMS? What's program? I, so, I'm not familiar so, with program. So power. program power. Oh, this is go. one of my favorite questions that I'd like to answer. So effectively, program power is not, it's not like RMS, but it's also not peak power. What it is, it's like, hey, I'm looking for a product. Uh, I'm looking for an amplifier to power this. The program power is 800 watts. You should buy an 800 watt amplifier to power this product. <laughs> So okay. it's like use the size amplifier. That's effectively what program power is. I like that cone. It looks really sharp, actually. Yeah, I like. I like it. that cone. What's the material yeah, have, for that cone? Yeah. So the uh, the uh, the one I've had I've seen in person was the HWG one hundred and sixty, which is a, a woofer, and it is a really nice woofer. It has the same style cone, and it's in the same series. So their their products are it. It's hard to like understand at first because there's a lot that goes into it. So um, the prefixes mean mean something. So C is the car line, the uh, P is pro, and H is home. And then there's some that have like F, and then it's like this is for like a different application, and it starts going downhill with like it's, yeah. There's the uh, it's kind of a mess as far as that goes, but we're trying to clean that up a little. <laughs> F is the one that did not do well in school. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> this one's got to go back. <laughs> now, so, you know, it, it's interesting because when I'm looking at these Chi Chiare products, in car audio, there seems to be two different methods to building car audio speakers that I have noticed. Mm -hmm. um, one method is, especially with subwoofers, give it a lot of power and like no sensitivity at all. Right. You know, we're just mm -hmm. going to, we're going to give it that high roll surround. And then there's the other ideology, which is, all right, we're going to go with a higher sensitivity than normal, but it may not have as much excursion that you're capable of, uh, uh, you know, some of the other ones are capable of what, what is Chiare's like, where do they fit in? So Chiara is interesting. So uh, there's a product I act, I would have brought it in, but I actually uh, gave it to a, 
uh, dealer that needed it. And it's uh, their big subwoofer. And this is what would be considered a true SPL subwoofer. So meant for obtaining large numbers. So it's got a very tight gap. And in and of that, it doesn't have a super high power handling for like AES power rating, like over a long term. But what it does have is like it's able to take a lot of power instantaneously. So for like a burp of sorts. So if you're like for to do SPL numbers, generally you burp at a single frequency so that you can maximize your output. Absolutely. So yeah, with, with that, so the CSW series is uh, the competition subwoofer series, and uh, it is interesting. So a lot of drivers, uh, subwoofers, will use like a plastic piece for the triple joint where the cone meets the meets the former meets yeah. the spider. Well. She already does a little bit extra just to make sure that this, we're going to make sure this thing does not break. So what they actually used <laughs> was nice. an, uh, an epoxy, a very thick epoxy. And what it does is it seeps into like the porous materials of like the former and then the spider and then the cone. And it's not going to break. So that's the big allure of that is triple joint failure is one, a very common failure for competition subwoofers. I am. Um, I've been browsing the website, and um, so I noticed uh, these right here component sets. Um, mm, that's nice. Those are those look cool. I like that the look of that cone. Um, I mean, just because the cone looks nice doesn't mean it's going to sound good or not, right? It looks pretty. It must sound good. Uh, it, it, so, it actually, but ironically, it does sound very good. Hey, there's there's my subwoofers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I I pulled those up earlier to to because I wanted to talk about those for a second, but uh, but let's try to stay on topic, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, and so and this right here looks like a different line. Looks like maybe um, that frame reminds me a little bit of uh, Hertz the way they do their frames. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so um, with that. That driver was meant for, that was like a strict car audio driver that we developed. It's the same type of idea. It's like, we're going to make it so it fits all different types of uh, mounting locations and popular cars. Obviously, in Italy, so you're going to be like, make the Fiat, Volkswagen, stuff like that, the popular European cars. So, right, right. Um, with that, I mean, I, I, I'm working on bringing those drivers in to start doing. Um, to start doing some component sets, but with the, so there's a lot of pro <laughs> car audio companies, like you, there's PRV, there's DS18, there's a lot of stuff, and everybody, everybody and their mother really has a pro car audio driver now. Right. The, the difference between like Chiare and like a lot of the, these other brands is we really do just, we make what we want, and we release what we want. And so it's exactly the what we like. We're not going to release junk. We're going to re release something that we would be proud to have in our name. And it's made in Italy. I'm not saying these other companies are necessarily junk. That's not true. But they don't always engineer their, their own products to, right. to fit the customer's need. So no, you're right. So we're fitting, we're making these products and we're getting it out. And it's a little bit more expensive than these other pro these other products. And so that's the obstacle that I say is trying to promote them. But at the same time, the quality control is there, the R and E is there, and the the reliability is just a huge difference between a lot a lot of these drivers and what we sell. Um, it's it's just and and that's kind of the challenge. Um, I don't I don't ever want to talk bad about any brand, um, but I think I look yes, at something do. like I look at something like <laughs> DS eighteen, and I scratch my head and I just go, why? What what? Why do we? You need just this talked do do? bad about a brand. You just, you, you know, I don't like I, to I talk bad about a brand, but I'm going to go ahead. I didn't and talk say anything bad negative. About I just said I don't understand why. I don't understand. You said you don't know why they exist. You just I said don't I don't it. even know. Why. So, so, to be fair, so DS8, the people that run DS18 are very smart. They're they're very smart people. They know what they're doing. Uh, so as far as especially marketing strategies, one year when I went to FEMA a couple years ago. And I was just looking, just going around looking at all these cars. And there was a good, I'd say, 30% of the cars that were there that advertised having audio had DS18 stickers on the car. So it, that, and that's huge. So there probably were more cars that didn't necessarily advertise that they had DS18 that had DS18. 
So all, they were able to get promotion from just normal show cars. So who are these these people that are going to be buying uh, speakers? And they don't know anything about it, but they, they have a buddy that also has a classic car. It's like, hey, what speakers do you have there? Oh, DS18, you're going to love them. So that's like the crowd that people like forget about. It's like the, the silent sale. And that's huge. They're smart. And that's one of those things that I wish more brands would understand. Um, you know, if I were to wake up tomorrow and start a speaker brand, um, I would, from a social media standpoint, right? Everyone who had any, any social media presence of any size whatsoever would get a box with my speakers in them. Uh, just simply because I, I would want everyone, no matter where you look, I'm, you know, there's my speakers, right? You want your that's presence. what I would do. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, that's, a, that's not a common, it's not an uncommon strategy. Um, and the only, the, there are two ways to do that. One way is to, is to sell a whole lot of product and people like it and, and show it off. And the other way is to just pump it out, you know, free to social media. You know, that's, well, that's yeah. how you get your name out free but yeah yeah, yeah. no you're you're right i mean even like companies i've, I've worked with which you know, like cartesian and stuff no one knew who they were until i brought i can't say no but you know they're the vast majority of my viewers i should say didn't know they existed until until we we mess with them um good or bad whatever that is that's up to them but yeah i i agree now jeff i want you to settle a debate between justin and i We've had this debate for a while. I'm not really, so I haven't been in car audio in a very, very long time. And it's not really a, a debate that me and Justin, like, are, like, one is on each side, but we've debated what's better, I guess. Yeah. There's, there's two, all right, there's two thoughts in this car audio realm. Well, first of all, is Chiara considered sound quality or are they considered SPL? I mean, opinion? it really just depends on the product. Like, um, so it depends on the line. It, yeah, but then at the same time, if you use, if you design an enclosure, an enclosure is really going to dictate how a driver sounds like. To be one hundred percent honest here, so I mean, I could I could find a, the most gorgeous uh, sound quality subwoofer out there. I could go find in any of them, and I could just put it into a really beautiful enclosure. But it's just not designed right. It's not for that. Sure. And it's going to sound awful. So, I mean, effectively, if you design, and that, that's the beauty of, like, trying to design products. Like, you can simulate the stuff and get it just where you think it's right and then toss it in a car. And that car has other ideas of what that resonant frequency is going to be. <coughs> just because you tune an enclosure to 30 hertz does not mean that's going to be the peak in that vehicle. It that's doesn't mean point. that you're, you're going to get all kinds of different how it loads in the car, what uh you know it, there's just so many different factors all right so i already know we're not we're going to get a non-answer on this but i'm going to ask it anyway because yeah. i already started yeah, I, question. so, so the, the, ask, an, the, ask question, the question then the question is because i've always felt that if you're going for sound quality i always felt like the best thing to do would be to get a lot of high efficiency style drivers in there because you can should be able to dictate your distortion more in the essence of uh, your distortion from your amplifier, the distortion of the drivers themselves. Uh, you should be able to hopefully have more control over that. And so I've always said, well, why, why don't we use more like high efficiency driver? And when I say high efficiency, I just mean higher efficiency than 82 decibels or whatever, <laughs> you know, these car speakers are, you know, 90 decibels, 95, you know, or, or like what you did with your horns in your front, you know, like those, those things, for me, it just makes sense to me. Granted, I haven't been in car audio in so many years that I could be completely off basis for this. Yeah. So really what it comes down to, there, there's a lot that goes into this. And there's a lot of different methods that work. Uh, it also depends on the driver. But one of the more popular like things to start doing now is like big people that are dedicated to sound quality is true IB. So like there's a, the fake IB, which is where if somebody has like a trunk, they'll right. take out the back seats or whatever, and they'll put a baffle there, and they'll just put a driver there without an enclosure on that baffle and call it IB. 
canopy, which effectively it's not because it's it's just a large leaky enclosure. Right. The uh, trunk is point. the trunk is the enclosure at that point. Yeah. But people are doing true IV where they are cutting out the spare tire well, mounting the enclosure there with an with a uh, waterproof membrane separating it so that the driver isn't destroyed and having like true IV. So and just for those that don't know, IB is infinite baffle. That's what we're talking about here. And the 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 goal of I, uh, infinite baffle is essentially to not have issues with the back wave interacting with the cone or the front wave. So with that, you get less distortion that way. But I mean what? that that's a great way to go. I mean you don't have to, the the downfall of I, infinite baffle is there's not many subwoofers that are suited well for it. I mean, you can make something work, but generally uh, the rule of thumb is like uh, you need a QTS of like 0. 0.7, somewhere in that general realm. And then um, you also need something that has a very low FS, not that that really matters the whole lot in and of itself either. And then um, you also need something that is efficient because yeah. you don't get that gain. And hopefully so, something and with a strong means, motor too, right? <laughs> and that usually means a, a big 18 or something like that. Um, I actually have a viewer sent me a picture the other day who who did the true infinite baffle, cut the cut the hole in the bottom of their trunk. And I tell you what, I mean, cutting a hole in the bottom of your trunk, you're you're dedicated. This is commitment. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, what, what I did the RAV4 was uh, I actually, so I was competing in uh, Mecca Bobos last year. It was mostly just a demo car, just to kind of like show off, hey, check out this cool stuff that BNC and Chari make. So I, we did a fiberglass enclosure in the RAV4. Took a, the, the spare tire well in the RAV4 is, it, it, it's too, I don't understand why it's so big. It just is. So I think there was a high, there's hybrid models and they just kept the same huge trunk space because they needed it for batteries. Um, right, right. But when I took on the spare tire and did a fiberglass enclosure, we got 4.5 cubic feet out of that. Wow. So, yeah, we so we did a nice 18 in there, ported, and uh, that had a really good time, scored really well in sound quality competitions. And for, for being the design that it is, where you're just loading into nothing, there's no boundary reinforcement from, like, uh, when you port, it, when you put a subwoofer facing like the rear of a vehicle, you mm -hmm. get gain because you're able right. to direct where the, the sound right the, the port loading right yeah. yeah. So with that, um, I didn't do get that because it was just firing into nothing straight up at the roof and dissipating. But yeah. I still managed to get on about fifteen hundred watts. I think a hundred almost a hundred about one hundred and forty five decibels. And that's SPL, crazy. Okay. Which is that's, very, very good. I mean, for what that is. And oh yeah, for like that's no wattage at all, really. When yeah. in, in car audio nowadays, it's like nothing. Yeah, right, and, but right. it's also uh, you know, just a design flaw effectively for SPL. But that's that wasn't necessarily the primary goal. So it just worked out to do fairly yeah. well. <laughs> so it, it's really cool. Uh, we did that with the BNC iPals. Now, if you want to talk about a great driver, that that is uh, that is probably one of the I would hazard to guess the best one of the best subwoofers on the planet. How do you that spell that? I P A L. I -P -L. Yeah, I. Uh, you could do like eighteen I P A L. All right. Let's see if uh, see if it could pop up here. Um, so while 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 we're having this. Um, Blake's talking about efficiency. Blake works for a car audio, really famous, good car audio company. I'm not going to say anything about them, but he says, hey, because the lowest efficiency car audio speakers are almost always north of 87 decibels. He used the word efficiency, but I think he means sensitivity here. Yeah. Sensitivity, and most are closer to 90 decibels. To get much more than that, you need to start compromising. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I want to disagree with that to a certain degree for a lot of reasons. Although Blake, Blake's going to fight me on this and you can fight me on this and I could be wrong. But when I look really closely into car audio sensitivity specs, I always see the rainbows of what sensitivity could be. <laughs> you, you, it's a, it's brush, you brush it off. Sensitivity for yeah. most, 
I just don't know how a lot of people measure it. You can look and sometimes they'll tell you, but really like most of these are measured at 1K still, which is not, it's not even relevant. So you're measuring your subwoofers sensitivity at 1K, which is an efficiency. So efficiency is effectively how well it does this with what it's given. So sensitivity is just like, hey, if you put one watt into this, this is what it gives you, but it's not efficiency. Yeah, I think it, I found I, that I, I found. a lot of times when I see like like Klipsch does this too. Klipsch like they'll give their sensitivity rating, and mm -hmm. they'll have some like crazy peak somewhere in their speakers where all of a sudden jumps like five decibels up higher, and they're like, "Our sensitivity is ninety nine decibels," but everywhere else it's like ninety four. You know, and it's like, no, <laughs> so I I don't know. I I have a rough time with sensitivity in general of of looking at like what you just said, looking at that spec and knowing if it means what they say it means to me yeah this the, this the one right oh, here yeah that's it four and a half inch voice coil 30 3400 watt continuous power handling uh that yeah, is, look at that neo too yeah look at that neo magnet that is a huge neo magnet i mean that in mm -hmm. a good way is that like what how many neo is that just one big neo magnet yeah, or is that a, so it so it's oh so it's an inside um it's a slug that's inside the gap, so inside the coil. So gotcha. it's a single slug in, in there. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. Um, so a lot of people that see this, and if they do any kind of car audio and on a competitive level, most people are like, that's not going to do well in SPL because it's, it's a four and a half inch voice coil. You know, it's too heavy. It's not going to be super efficient. You don't need super efficient, but at the same time, you need to be able to, um, you need to hit like that point of, okay, I'm getting the most out of this driver with the power handling. And a lot of, like, a lot of people will frown upon a larger voice coil for that. That's why a lot of SPL subwoofers are like three inch voice coils. Hmm. But this driver is like an anomaly. Uh, BNC did. This is, like I said, one of the best subwoofers on the planet, and it, it looks more like a like a pro audio driver with that accordion surround instead of the big high roll surround. Yeah, the that's that's the thing that gets people. So uh, we had uh, two people. We had some people that did drop ins with the well known as probably the best SPL subwoofer uh, on the market and we did some drop-in testing most people gained about a db when using the ipal in the enclosure that's optimized for um the other driver interesting so of course this is on power handling that's like close to 2500 watts of driver so it's still like it's still within the realms but you can put more power to this ipal still so Jeff, how do you feel about a 1998 Chevy S10? I mean, they're they're really nice, and they get they get loud when you put some uh, put some effort into it. Great, because Stu's going to trade you one for eight of those. Oh, eight of them. <laughs> he said he wants eight of them for his. And he, and he said, S10. "Do you accept 98 S10s plural, implying he's willing to trade more than one multiple, S10? Multiple. Oh, S10. I, I like where this was going. This is great. I'm going to halt the work on the element right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, but, okay. But this driver is just, it, it's just an awesome driver. It's efficient. It is, it just gets very loud for what it is and it can handle power. And there's, it's, the thing is, no, pe people won't pay attention to it because it's got that pro woofer look. But right. what people don't understand is you don't need high excursion to create a lot, like a, a lot, lot of, of yeah. That that's the whole thing is at some point for most ported enclosures, it's going to be motor force. Like at some point, motor the more motor force you have, the louder something is going to get. And so, a lot of the the neo woofers in car audio, they're 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 using these strange like open like neodymium columns and stuff and it's like how are you utilizing this flux correctly when you don't have like uh any way of controlling it 
So like that's why is you don't the, see a lot of this stuff with the, the is, the, is the kid okay there? It's just like the head has oh, yeah, gone he, over. He's out. He's out. out. Yeah, he's he's out. out. Happens all the time. Just passes out while I'm talking. It's because I'm bored. <laughs> Well, no, it, yeah. it's your voice is soothing. <laughs> if it wasn't soothing, yep. he'd be soothing. crying. Soothing. Yeah, soothing. yeah, not boring. Soothing, soothing, Jeff. Yeah. So, Jeff, this is kind of funny that you say that because I recently did a video on the channel about mm -hmm. how I felt well, that in general with these larger subwoofers now, these 21-inch subwoofers, any normal size room, you know, I'm not talking about these huge, great rooms that are open to like 17 different other rooms, but in like a normal sized room that you could take a high efficiency driver, 21 inch or so, mm -hmm. put it in a sealed box, save yourself a lot of space versus going ported mm -hmm. and still get that low end extension that you want because you have so much headroom in the mm -hmm. ported enclosure already. And so now I have dual 21 inch subwoofers in my theater room. I can't, I think it's like 25 by 15 or something. I can't remember exactly what mm -hmm. size the room is. It, it's a decent size. It's not huge, but it's not small either. And that thing shakes everything in that room and i'm giving it each subwoofer 800 watts so 1600 yeah. total watts and i mean i'm i'm shaking that like at, at 20 hertz i think it was going down flat to five hertz it, it was what, just it's just crazy what drivers are you using are you using a kraken no i'm using the uh i'm using sb audience actually um okay the something 800s i can't remember the model number something 800 okay yeah, so I mean, effectively, I, I, like we were. I do like the Kraken. Earlier. Yeah, the Kraken's cool. Uh, <laughs> if you guys were, if you were to do something where you wanted to use those as like a woofer and made it up to like the DCX, as long as you weren't doing like exceptionally loud, you could easily do that. But then you also lose the benefit of having the dcx at that point too because the dcx is meant to get incredibly loud mm. so effectively for mid bass for a dcx what they do is, is this is like the bare minimum of what you should do uh, they have a design that you can look up on the bnc suggested design page and it's two of the uh 215s as the mid bass that's not subwoofers that's mid bass uh for the DCX 464. <laughs> that is wow. like the bare minimum of what you should do. <laughs> so Stu's got a question. He said, Jeff, would that BNC, which I think he's talking about the 18 IPAL, mm -hmm. uh, replacement be an upgrade from an Eminence Kilomax? Kilomax? I, I'm not familiar with the Kilomax either. Oh, he, let's see. He does open... No. That's someone else. He said he uses a Crown XTI 4002 for power. The only thing is, I, I don't know, the, the, the Crown XTI 2000, 4002, does it do 2 ohm stability? Because wasn't that subwoofer 2 ohm? Yeah, the subwoofer is 2 ohm. I, and it, it might be when it's when it's um, when it's bridged. I don't, I don't remember. I mean, I have an XTI, but I can't remember if it's... I've, I've never needed it to be 2 ohm capable, so I guess... I mean, there are, so there are other, uh, there are similar drivers to the iPal. Uh, the, what makes the iPal the iPal uh, would be the uh, the low impedance for this. So there's some similar, very similar drivers that we sell, which would be the DS line. So any of the DS line would be very comparable to an iPal driver, but not have that low impedance. See, this, this is where I think would be really cool is take something like the DS line. Is that four ohm capable or four eight ohm? Probably they have both voice coils. Is that how <laughs> yeah. that works? Yeah. <laughs> so take something like the 18 inch DS line, take that horn behind you, hook it up with a uh, with that compression coaxial you showed before. Although is that is that a two inch horn or a 1.4 inch horn? This is one this one is 1.4. They no, there I mean, is a two inch version. I meant the horn. It's uh, the wave guy. Oh, the horn. The wave. The wave guy is one point four. Okay, so they would. So yeah, you could, you could hook that those two up with that eighteen inch and make one. Uh, I I would think really amazing speaker. I, I think that could be oh, pretty absolutely. awesome. So I at finals, uh, I so I I used a combination of the eighteen iPal. And the DCX four six four in the back of my RAV four for uh, 
a format called Dueling Demos, which <laughs> right. I, I used the 18 as a woofer. But it wasn't great because, again, like like I said, it's it's great for ease of use and still retaining a cargo area, but definitely not super great for using it as a uh, mid bass, especially since I had it crossed at about four or five hundred. Um, gotcha. So I was missing out on a lot of information since it was just firing directly up and into <laughs> the false board that actually held the ME four six four the horn back there. And uh, but it got exceptionally loud and it still sounded very good to a to a point. Of course, the horn was the driver was still down like twenty almost twenty dB in the DSP and it was only seen about uh, one hundred fifty watts something like that where the DCX can handle substantially more than that. Wow. Yeah. That's, so. I mean, that's just so, uh, that's really cool. I, I love to see what you're doing with all your uh, car audio stuff. Cause I love the power wheels thing. I, I'm interested to see what you're going to do with your element now. So it'll be, it'll be very interesting. Yeah. I tell you what oh, I'd yeah. like to do is um, I'd like to have you on again. And this time mm -hmm. have you bring pictures of what you're building because I would love to, I'd love to see it. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't have a chance to make it to shows and stuff. And so I, I need to get to some sound quality shows and hear some, you know, top end sound quality vehicles so I can get an idea of what that, you know, what to do. Where in my are you own located vehicle. at? I don't say that online. Oh, <laughs> I mean, he, we're, like, we're, he might tell you after the show. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. So, well, yeah, well, but, um, uh, but the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to work on improving things. And my, my kind of goal at the moment is to try to create a, a, something I can use to test speakers out because I'd love to be able to say to companies, Hey, I've got this great spot. All we got to do is, you know, put a, put your sofa in a box and slide it in right here. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, do an SPL test in the car or something and see how it sounds, see, you know, that kind of stuff. But I do need to get into more of the sound quality stuff, and I'd love to have a sound quality expert come on the show sometime and say, "Here's what you got to do to to you know to make a, a non embarrassing showing at a Mika contest." Yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, I do I do pretty well. I don't. Uh, there are a lot of people better than me. Like, they're, they're, let's just be upfront here. There's a lot of people that can tune better than I can. A lot of people, almost everybody, can build better than I can in general. I, I do all right installing the stuff because I don't mind cutting out my hands and getting in places. But when it yeah. comes to fabricating and stuff like that, I am not I am not the guy to come and reach out to. Although um, there for a while you were you were doing a lot of three D uh, printed tweeter pods. Well, but for that a while. kind of fabrication. This way, buddy. Yeah. Like YouTube, but <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I do all right with some of the stuff, but the three D print when I I still have some, a couple of three D printers, but I was doing a lot of uh, speaker pod printing with my I had a three D printer business, printed acoustics, and it just got to be too much, and I I just went too deep into it, and I just for my own sanity and the my own health, I'm going to step aside from this because I put too much I I worry about stuff a lot, so I put my customers before a lot of much farther up my priority list than I probably should. So, uh, you know, but with that, you know, I can, I can get by when it comes by the, when it comes to cat stuff. Like I can, I've designed all kinds of stuff in cat, but, uh, my, my skills do not translate super well into, uh, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the beauty of, of DIY, right? Because it, it's it's really easy to sit in front of a computer and go, aha, here's how it should work. And then you're, you know, elbows deep inside of a vehicle trying to take a take a panel out going, I don't know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, the rubber meets the road when you're out there in the shop, you know, wrenching and 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 gluing things together and trying your hand at fiberglass. Um, you know, and you know, the idea is every day to try to get a little better. And I'm definitely not the world's best. I'm not, not by a long <laughs> shot, but every day I try to do something new and try to get a little better at it. Absolutely. So I just realized we're about 15 minutes over, which means that Jeff is probably being paid by BNC Group by the minute. So he's trying to drag. Oh, I'm, I'm off today. Don't worry about it. You're all right. Oh, yeah. it, it, no, you're getting time months. and a half. Time and a half because of the holiday. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
so before we go, we're, we always say what we've got going on our channel. We're going to thank Jeff as well. Stay tuned because I'm going to share with you what I believe is the best value amplifier on the market bar none it's just coming out it's going to be pre-order i actually have a link down in the description as well this thing is phenomenal i was sharing it with justin before the show before that first of all thank you jeff for coming is there anything we did not cover that you'd like to cover well there's a lot that we didn't get to cover mostly because i talked a lot and ramble but uh if, if anybody's curious about like any of the chiari stuff uh go ahead you can check out the facebook page chiari north america uh, or you can uh, message me directly, Jeff Schneider, and I'd be more than happy to respond to stuff like this and try and help people out. If you need help with BNC or Chiari, whatever you need. So there's a BNC SBA page, which is Italy. I also inherently manage that. <laughs> and then uh, the uh, BNC North America page. So if you need help with any of that stuff, feel free to message me directly or uh, message these uh, message those pages, and I'll help out however I can. Excellent. All right, Justin, you got something you want to share with us. What the heck is going on? <laughs> the, the, the back seat's out. Uh, the point of no return. This is before I pulled the seat belts out. And, you know, it looks like a big, you know, rat's nest of wires. But I promise it was cleaner than that before I started ripping things out. And I drove around for about a week with, uh, um, with the seat out. And then I finally was at the point, well, the amplifiers have to come out. So they're out. Um and uh, so there you go. The the amplifiers are out. Mm. That's what I was running. Now it's it's. I've already had this all pulled out, and I've full baked potatoed everything in the back at this point. And I'm going to put some. Um, I've got some mass loaded vinyl uh, as well, and I'm going to just try oh. to get this as dead as possible um, because a lot of road noise comes in from the back of the cabin. And you can uh, fact yeah, see this uh, black panel right here is mass loaded vinyl that I put up there. I guess I installed that. <laughs> before I started the YouTube channel and this was the first thing I tried to film and could never get the camera to not fall over and realize I need to buy a <laughs> tripod. Um, but, uh, but so this has been in there since probably 2018 and it's all coming out. So there you go. Yeah. Well, so I, I also bought a bunch of mass loaded vinyl and uh, some foam. So I'm going to be doing that. If you, if you ever need dead in their stuff, a cool, a cool uh, place to go look would be the like Resonix. So Resonix is another brand of deadener that's come out uh, by uh, Nick Apicella out of New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was on the DIY mobile audio forums. I haven't been on yeah. there in a long time, but yeah, he was a very informative fellow, yeah. Oh, yeah. So on their site, they actually have a reference page or a resource page where you can go in and see like the uh, the independent testing that was done on a whole bunch of different types of deadener and how it all works and how to apply this stuff. But like it shows you how vastly superior that stuff is to like others. And this isn't testing he's done. This is testing that's been done by like a professional source. So Sound Editor wild. Showdown did all that testing before Sound Editor Showdown shut down. So yeah. Yeah. It's really cool to check out. <laughs> so how do you spell Resonix? R E S O N I X. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. I was spelling the EX. That was my problem. I was thinking like Resin X. Like, <laughs> you're out of here. All right. So um, I told, I promised you guys that I would share what I think is the best valued amplifier on the market or what I what I think is. You guys can share what you think is better. I'd probably even say it's probably the most powerful uh, amplifier. And by power, I don't necessarily mean wattage. Okay. So let's Let's get that out of the way before I get in trouble by someone saying that's only two by 50 watts. Yes, it is only two by 50 watts. That's not what I mean by power. Uh, also, I did just uh, show you how to design and build your own RCA cable. So if you haven't got to see that, take a look at this. Now, this is a relic. I put a link down in the description of the video. This thing is unbelievable. So this is a little mini amplifier that you put for your computer or, or, or your uh, I would use this for a, a bedroom personally. This thing has HDMI arc on it. So if you guys don't know what that is, that's audio return channel. It just means you run your arc HDMI from your TV into this. Anything run to your TV will then output to this. So now that in of itself is kind of cool, but this also, since it's a relic, it has their whole house audio sound. So you can go ahead and connect this to your other units inside your house. At least it's supposed to. It does have your phono input. So if you have a turntable, you'll hook up a phono to it, has subwoofer out. It has a true DSP with it, although you do have to buy the DSP program. It's 20 bucks, but still. It has um, 
Bluetooth in 5.0 and Bluetooth out. So if at night you don't want to listen to your speakers, you can then send it to up to two pairs of Bluetooth headphones and you can actually send that signal out. Uh, of course, it does have, it's supposed to have, I have never seen the remote control, but they say it has a remote control with it. And then it also has an app that's supposed to control it as well. I mean, this thing just, it's only $111. I don't understand how they can do it for $111. Of course, that's a pre-order price. It's going to be $140. Yeah, and so I mean, so like I, my background, obviously, I designed a lot of the. Oh, uh, the it has a DAC too. Sorry. I designed a lot of the products at Parts Express, like the uh, HTA 200, like the stuff like that was was me. So with that, you know, so seeing something like this, this is incredible. I mean, that's a that's a great value, and I, it's I not know, easy I, to make something like this. <laughs> I can't. Well, I haven't seen very many of these little ones with even HDMI arc on it. Period. No, I've never, seen, I've never seen that before on a small piece of equipment. Really, something other than like an like an HDMI specific piece. Yeah, like a like a sound bar or something. Yeah. Right. I I I, I am thoroughly impressed with this. I you will see this on the channel. I will get one, um, and I'll I'll share my opinions on it. But if this is something that you've been looking for, I would get it now while it's on pre order because. You, you might as well. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I have today. It's, it's crazy. I, I keep saying to Justin, I'm like, where are we going next in audio? Like it, it is so impressive to be where we are now. Cause it used to be, okay, let's see what the new receiver looks like this year because nothing changed, you know, <laughs> or let's see what the new speaker looks like. But now like you guys like BNC starting out with these compression coaxials, which, you know, very few companies make. Now they're coming out with a triaxle, and I don't know of any other company making a triaxle uh, speaker. You might crazy stuff. I mean, the, honestly, like a lot of so what a lot of people don't understand, uh, just like a partying tidbit, is most of the innovation in audio comes from pro audio because these mm. companies, everybody is such a pain. To like think of it like this customers it's like i want to do something that's next to impossible can you do it and it's like uh, I mean, we, we can try and so we try and we try and we try and finally it's like hey we did this and it's like oh cool, awesome cool so we do that but like it there aren't those driving forces really in other industries it's like home audio it's like hey we want to make the best sounding thing okay well we can try and do something like that the, there's obviously some, uh, I can't remember the Purify it being uh, a different mm -hmm. example because that's, I mean, like yeah. just a gorgeous woofer, wonderful engineering behind that. It's uh, kind of ugly on the outside, but it's it's beautiful, beautiful on the engineering, inside. Beautiful engineering, the, the idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. It's not, it's not super pretty with that surround, but it's, they put a lot of effort into that. But a lot of the driving force behind innovation and audio comes from the pro side where they need it to be this light, they need it to be this big, and they need it to be this reliable. So it, it's it's really cool to see all this innovation come out, especially when you're like you're getting to see some of the stuff develop and it's just like, oh, I didn't think you could do that, but that's great. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, guys. Well, we will talk to you guys later. As always, we have enjoyed this. If you guys want more behind-the-scenes footage, both Justin and I have our own Patreon account. You're welcome to take a look at that and see if that's something that you guys would be interested in. Otherwise, guys, this is Sound Advice. It's Toys DIY Audio. We're it's out. DIY Audio guy, and we are out. <laughs>